A question people ask me is, why would I use an Android phone with a MacBook? I mean, no one's actually asking me that question, but you know who is asking questions on this channel? Our sponsor, Nobody. I haven't been on an iPhone since the launch of the S23 Ultra back in February. I'm currently on the Nothing Phone 1, patiently waiting for the Nothing Phone 2. And I guess society has accepted that if you own an iPhone, you have to get a MacBook. And if you own an Android phone, you have to get a Windows computer. There are clear advantages of using the device paired with its respective counterpart. For example, the famous airdropping and iMessage connectivity, and for those of you who might not know, the link to Windows on Android devices gives you access to quite literally every app on your device. And two Samsung products together actually give you quick share, which is basically airdrop, if not better. Can't wait to see the comments go wild over that one. Why would I go against the norm and pair up an Android device with the MacBook? The reality is Apple has really nailed the laptop space recently and it's kind of hard to ignore the value a MacBook brings when all the work I've previously done on Windows can be done on a Mac OS with ease. But hang on a second, what about iMessage? What about messaging from your computer? As stated in my goodbye Apple, hello Samsung video. If you use Google Messages, you can go to messages.google.com and message from any device on any OS, whether it be Mac OS, Windows, dare I say Linux. I can also just download the desktop app of WhatsApp as well as message everyone on my MacBook with no problem using my Android device. So the whole iMessage iPhone thing is kind of irrelevant if you use Google Messages. Okay, but what about AirDrop? I mean, what about it? Just kidding. So first thing I wanna mention is if the file size is small, 99% of the time, I'm just going to email it to myself and download it. Now, if we run into larger files, multiple photos, videos, that's where some of the headache occurs, but not really. Sure, being able to just tap on AirDrop and have your files transferred is great, but it's not impossible to do the same thing on Android. Same thing. Let me explain. So there's two ways of handling this. There's the Samsung way and the Android way. Samsung has something called Quick Share, which I have to stress is not the same thing as Nearby Share, which is what Google has, which is probably what most Android devices have. So if you try to Quick Share on a Samsung device and it detects that there is no nearby device to share it to, it will automatically upload it to the cloud temporarily. And with that link, you can share it and download it with whoever you want. You can text it to yourself, you can email the link to yourself and download it. Now, the other way of doing it would be to upload it on Android, such as Google Drive, OneDrive, dare I say, iCloud. If you have the respective apps on your laptop as well, you just have to download the file. It's as easy as that. But I know what you might be saying in the comments. Airdropping is simply better, especially if you don't have a Samsung device. Why are you going through all that effort with an Android device and a MacBook? Well, it's not that annoying. And once again, with Samsung products, they make it pretty easy in order to share between multiple devices. Uploading to iCloud, OneDrive, or Google Drive, I'm not really losing out on much other than an extra few steps of uploading and downloading the file. Because at the end of the day, I just want my file from my device to my computer. Okay, but what about Safari? You lose all the synchronization you have with your iPhone. Now, as much as Safari is a great browser, which it is most of the time, I use other products like Brave and Edge that offer the same synchronization features that I can use on any browser I go to. And if we're gonna be really honest with ourselves here, I really only use Safari on my iPhone when I had it, and I rarely ever use it on my MacBook because I end up using some Chrome-like browser. Now, the other thing that I discovered when I was using an Android device with a MacBook is that I'm more productive than before, which is kind of hard to explain. You see, with an iPhone and MacBook, everything is synced. I mean, technically you can select what you want to be synced, but 99% of people want everything to be synced. When I'm on a laptop, I need to get stuff done. And with notifications and everything flying at me while I'm trying to do work or use my computer, it kind of breaks my distraction and work of flow. But, gotta play devil's advocate. The best counter argument would be, why not just turn on Do Not Disturb? And my response to that is, you're completely right. That's the legitimate reason of why Do Not Disturb was invented. I have no counter to that argument, except 
I have a more natural do not disturb when using my computer now. You see, if I have a ton of stuff synced with my Apple ecosystem, your work and personal stuff kind of gets blended together that can lead to natural dis distractions despite not using do not disturb. Does this MacBook feel less complete in the ecosystem since I use an Android device? Absolutely. I'm not going to pretend that the MacBook is less capable than what it was before in terms of connectivity with my mobile device. The seamless handoff from my device doesn't exist. Being able to just transfer a call from my phone to my MacBook doesn't exist. Once again, if I have other Apple products, the seamlessness is just not there anymore. The full cohesion of this device and this device doesn't exist, but my laptop doesn't feel any less since I'm using an Android device. It just functions as a laptop and that's it. That's probably why I bought the laptop. If you have mismatching products between your smartphone and your laptop, they become more like tools where they have a focus on what they were designed for rather than fiddling around with features that in the grand scheme of things don't necessarily impact your purchase decision. However, I'm not gonna sit here and be ignorant because when you do match your smartphone and your laptop in their respective ecosystems, they perform better together and that's hard to pass up on. If you guys want a video on iPhone and MacBook versus a Galaxy phone and a Galaxy laptop, let me know down in the comments below. You may be shocked on how close the ecosystems are between the two. Nearby Share with Google is coming to Windows laptops so that that side of the spectrum is getting even better connectivity. So that's nice to see. If you also mismatch your device between an Android and a smartphone versus macOS and Windows, let me know down in the comments below and if you share the same experience. Appreciate every single sub, like, and comment. And as always, guys, much love. Also, people hate when I throw my products, but come on, guys. There's a person sitting there catching my phone every time. There's gonna be someone in the comments like, oh, you won't throw your laptop, you won't throw your smartphones. Done. If you own an iPhone, you have to get a MacBook. And if you own an Android, you have to get a Windows computer. I just realized I was supposed to put this up in the opposite direction. Come on, man. On Mac OS, not with Mac OS, on Mac OS. I can also just download the WhatsApp desktop app. WhatsApp desktop app, that sounds so weird. The WhatsApp app, that still sounds weird. Just uploading to iCloud, OneDrive. What's the other one? Google Drive. <laughs> I use other products like Brave and Edge that offer the same. If you have mismatching products between your laptop, this is a smartphone, idiot.